The next item is the consideration of a letter to send to legislators related to concerns with funding for education in the current biennial budget. And Mrs. Zardi will speak to that. Right. I think um, if you've been following the governor's budget in the paper and editorials in regard to it, um, public education is not sustainable um, if a zero increase in the revenue limit is, um, you know, the, the standard of how we're going to be dealt with. And we can talk about the voucher issue as well um, because there, you know, there's a, a <coughs> strong concern over the idea that it appears that the ideology of our current um, situation is that we publicly fund education, not that we fund public education. And there is a big difference between those two things. We're saying <coughs> that we believe public education is what every citizen of this country is entitled to, and that um, taxpayer money should not be spent on a second type of educational system which is a private educational system and while we understand the value of choice um, for parents that may be living in districts where schools are not performing um, as well as we'd like those schools aren't going to improve if um, they're not given the funds necessary to improve and a lot of the Research on the voucher schools again shows that students who participate in those schools are not performing significantly better than students in public schools. So we are at kind of a crossroads in the state of Wisconsin right now. I think people feel very strongly that money for vouchers is a policy issue. It should not be in the budget. That we need a discussion statewide whether we fund public education or whether we fund uh, excuse me, publicly fund education. And that's that can't happen um, in a budget bill. So school districts across boards of education across the state of Wisconsin are taking a stand at this point and saying we need to contact our legislators, we need to be talking with them about the impact of this budget on public education. And so I have pieced together for you um, a letter that highlights what TOMA is dealing with um, specifically in terms of how the last budget impacted us and our concerns with the current budget. I've also included for you the sample board resolution that your the Wisconsin Association of School Boards is recommending um, school boards approve and both of these documents with whatever changes you would like to make in, in them if you approve them would be sent to not only our legislators, but I think they need to go to the Joint Finance Committee as well as the uh, Education Committee in the Capitol. So I don't know if you have concerns or questions um, about the information that was contained in either of these documents. I think we just need to let the community know that this money that they want to give for the vouchers for the private schools is coming out of the main pot for the public um, education and that means less money for public education and that the public or the private schools are not held to the same standards that the public schools are and it is a, a big concern and it's not just less dollars it means no new dollars for public education while we're going to be funding new dollars to the voucher system and, and that's kind of the, 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 the bigger concern we have is that we're, we have many mandates that we have to fund or many requirements that we have to do, whereas the voucher systems are not held under those same requirements that we are mandated. And if we're going to do that, then we should be funding public schools at the same rate that we're funding the voucher schools so that we can at least have a chance here. 
and as Mrs. Zardi said, there is no research saying that they are doing better than than the public schools at this point in time. And there's definitely no proof, and there's, they're definitely not held to the same standard either. And there, and there are two issues. I mean, there's the issue of no new money for public schools. That's one issue, and how that impacts us financially, regardless of what happens with vouchers. And then there's the whole topic of should we be supporting voucher schools as well? So there, there's really two issues that come in that come into play. And if you really look at it, it's it's the expansion from one educational system to two, two. separate educational systems, and that's really what's happening here. You're seeing two educational systems that we can't. If we can't afford one, how can we afford two? That's really the, the <coughs> argument that. I would think there'd be additional support from districts across the state with this, Cindy. So if, if we're if we're doing this across the state, it could have a big effect on what goes on in Madison. We would hope so. Right. Yes. You know, Mr. Kennedy, you brought up the again, as did Mr. Gorder, the differences in accountability and tonight's a good example when you look at the money that you approved for new resources in English and math because of the Common Core you know that's expense that we're incurring because there's a new new curriculum that we are really required to adopt there's that requirement doesn't exist in private voucher schools they can teach the curriculum that they choose to um, we've, we have a committee that's focused on a flexible learning year we can't implement that because we are tied to a law that says September 1st is when public schools can start. Voucher schools can have their school year run any time of the year. So there are things that we want to do that our hands are tied on because we're a public school and there's things that we're expected to do and not given funding to do. So you almost feel like you can't win. You're trying to make improvements and do better and not getting the support that you need to do that. Well, and I think that's actually the intent, at least that's my opinion. Mr. Gordon, you said that what we're doing is we're funding two separate education systems. And it's my belief that the intent is that, we're, that the governor wants to phase out public education and privatize it. That's what my belief is. So he's choking out the public schools to increase private schools or charter schools or whatever you want to call them. I guess that's the way I look at it. And there, you know, there are additional provisions in the governor's budget, for instance, in regard to charter schools, that even public charter schools that are run by public school districts, that the, that the school board loses some degree of control over um, running those charter schools. Um, that he's he has um, suggested that there be a statewide uh, board that would govern charter schools. So. You know, we're talking about local control issues, and I know lots of times we say we don't have a lot of local control. I know we, we, we often feel that way, but it seems like that is being eroded even to a greater degree. It should be pointed out the expansion of charter schools and, and voucher schools will not, in this budget, affect Toma. Okay, but it will affect other districts and the concern is is that this is just a stepping stone until we get to the point where it will be a, a statewide voucher uh, you know charter school the other thing that we have to be concerned about we talk about in open enrollment expenses there's also in in these uh, conversations the money that is coming to the district will also follow the student to the the school of choice, which means that we will be losing funds in the Tome Area School District to the voucher and charter schools. So right now we have an open enrollment expense when a student leaves our district and goes to another school district, that money follows them. Okay, That doesn't mean our expenses in the Tome Area School District necessarily go down because you, you have to eliminate a class in order to eliminate a teacher. It's, it's not a one-for-one one trade off uh, you know the other thing that that is a little bit disconcerting for me is is that I, my personal belief is that um, 
you can get the degree of education that you want in any public school in the state of Wisconsin. It's up to the individual and the family to ensure to a certain degree that that is happening. If you believe that, your child will be able to get an excellent education. It happens every year in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, you know, furthermore, I, I, it scares me a little bit that we're going to be entertaining a system of the haves and the have-nots here in, in uh, education. In, in not only what will be left in public education, but what will be in the voucher schools, what will be in the charter schools. You know, where, where is that idea of of, of, of commonality anymore if we're going to privatize education and we're not going to have the commonality of the public school system anymore. I mean, it really, in some ways, is the last melting pot in this country that we have here. So it's a little disconcerting now that we're going to take what we've worked so, many, so hard over the centuries to, to bring together so many people of, of different origins and now start separating them out again. Um, you know, obviously there's things we need to improve on, but uh, you still can get an education in public schools to the degree that you put into it. And I think, you know, that's something that we need to do a better job of promoting. And um, we have many highly successful graduates from the Toma School District that are not only in our community, but that are making large contributions across not only the state as well as our nation and worldwide. Yeah. And highlighting those people and the quality education that you can get right here at home if you put your heart and mind into it um, is important for people to realize. So we need to do more promotion of the good things that um, and the great individuals who have gone through our system. Can't remain silent on this issue. We've got to take a stand. I, so I really encourage you to um, consider how you want to do that. I know that there is a legislative um, seminar scheduled for um, early April at CESA, and I would encourage as many of you as possible to attend that. <coughs> um, we just have to start connecting more with our legislators. We're fortunate that um, our legislators tend to support us um, in our beliefs. I mean, both Amy Sue Ruink and um, Julie Lassa. Uh, <coughs> I think if you saw the Toma Journal this week, there was an article by Julie about uh, feast or famine and that public schools really are being starved. And um, I know that Ms. Brewink um, feels the same way. And again, we've got Jennifer Schilling on the Finance Committee from the La Crosse area who also is very supportive of public education. So we're fortunate that we have individuals who um, will listen to us and agree with us, but I think they need to hear from us to know that um, we agree with the stance that they're taking. This letter is well written. Um, do you need a motion for us to, for it to be sent? I so, I so move. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the letter. Um, to send to legislators related to concerns with funding for education in the current biennial budget as presented for all of the reasons that were just discussed. And, um, you know, I, I would like to just follow up on that point Mrs. Zardi made about, and I think Mr. Gorder made too, that public education can and does provide excellent opportunities in education if you um, take advantage of the opportunities and if it's properly funded. I don't want to get into a uh, position of saying of being anti-choice or demonizing private schools. It's just the the direction or the way that they're handling it is 
is destroying the um, institution of public education that, that can be a great thing and has has built the United States. Um, and so, again, I guess my point is I don't want to be arguing from a defensive position saying all of those things are bad. It's, it's that we do provide um, great opportunities for kids every day and we're just asking for the appropriate funding for that. Um, any other thoughts on that? I would certainly agree with you, John. And, uh, the educational benefits that have come out of Toma, as Cindy has pointed out, the graduates from here are a proud group uh, nationwide and worldwide. I think we all, as a citizen of Toma or any place, need to take a long, hard look at education that we have, the benefits that we have. And like Cindy said, take a stand, not only us here, but the community as well. I mean, some things that happen in the school district in a day's time, we take for granted. I watch 55 buses drop by the high school every morning and see the kids get out. And it's such a timetable that you see in 10 minutes time these kids are offloaded and go into that school for education. The same thing happens at night. You know, we have such a wonderful system. I truly think that Governor Walker takes, has to take another look at where he, what, what kind of direction he's going in. And hopefully we got enough support in the state to boycott or do something to change his mind. This is, this is something new. Our education that we have has been built <laughs> way back when. And, and to his credit, from what I'm hearing, the governor is open to some changes in mm -hmm. it's good the to budget. Hear. So we're hoping that, um, again, Luther Olson and uh, Senator Ellis have proposed the $150 yeah, per pupil increase, and we're, we're very hopeful that if everyone gets behind that, that we could at least uh, obtain that amount. Yes, and he supports a lot of things in this state. Now, he, one thing he needs to do is get on top of education. Take a closer look at what's going on. And your letter um, is good in that it doesn't just, it's not us just saying we want more money, we want more money. It, it lays out the, our circumstances and what we need to be a viable and productive school district. And I think it's important to note we take our responsibility, as I as stated in the letter, very seriously. We're not content with the status quo. We're trying to improve. We're constantly looking for ways to be better and to help students. And um, we have an excellent staff that works very, very hard. And I know that our community as well is very supportive of um, our teachers and our school district, and that's greatly appreciated. But we know we have work to do, and, and we aren't shying away from that. We're doing everything that we can to make improvements in what we do. Okay. Uh, so we do have a motion and a second in support of that letter. Any other questions or, or thoughts? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Motion carries, and so that letter um, proposal is approved. And would you like us also then to pass a motion for the WASB uh, resolution? Yeah. We all of you should sign that as board members, the letter. So you can just sign where it has board, school board members. And then if you would. If you want to pass this resolution, that's fine as well. Um, that's up. Yeah, so, yeah, so. um, 
that certainly can be done as well. I just didn't know which format. Only one has to be done. I just wasn't sure which format you would prefer. So. Um, yeah, personally, I think our personal letter is sufficient and appropriate, but I'll certainly entertain a motion if people want to pass the sample resolution as well. I think this is more effective. Mm -hmm. Your the letter that was put together for, for the district because it has specifics on us and it states a strong case. Okay. Is that uh, Cindy, uh, excuse me, John. Sure. Uh, the CESA meeting that you're talking about in April, do you have a date? Yes, I do. It is scheduled for Thursday, April 4th, 6.30 p.m. at CESA 4. We will get a van together, and anybody that wants to ride over as a group, we can go together. Where is it, where is it at? It's in West Salem at the CESA building. That's April 4th? April 4th. So we would leave at? We would leave at 5.30. <coughs> and I will need to know which of, which of you folks are going to be attending that because if more than two of you go, we'll need to do a... Uh, so five, five, 6.30 is when it starts. If you want to go as a group, we'll be leaving at 5.30 from the district office. If you want to drive over separately, that's fine as well. the referendum sample resolution. Oh, we decided not to do that. Mm -hmm. Unless unless someone wants to make a motion, we can certainly vote on it, but there were at least a few people that felt like the letter was sufficient. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm not even going to ask for a motion, but I'll certainly entertain one right now if someone wants to make it. Judy? Do you, do you want people to commit right now to the April 4th, or do they need to get to you within the next day or two? Yeah, if they, I mean, if you want to check your calendars and let me know. If you know today that you're going, I can make a note. Okay. I'll go. Okay. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. I got to look. Okay. okay. I'll go, Cindy. Looks like we're at least going to have enough to, that you'll have to notice it. Yes. And we have a, a van that would accommodate everyone? Um, at this point, we have five people going. So we can take two more. Seven is the max in the van. So if Deb and Gary decide to go. I'll just meet you in West Salem. Okay. I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. We hope you'll go, Mr. Grosting. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to see it too, John. Okay. We'll talk with the, the budgeter at home. Okay. <laughs> if, you know you. What I, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Her I name mean. is Mary Ann. Okay. <laughs> She's a sweetheart at times. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs>